Thank you for joining the Sunday School lesson here at Holy Trinity. Wow, very fine pastors, Pastor Lisa May Bridges. I think she got on black and white, or black and gray, or something. I ain't looked at it too good this morning yet. But, uh, oh, there she is. She over there messing with the counter. This is our very fine pastor. And today we Jack, thank you for joining our Sunday School lesson here at Holy Trinity. <clears throat> our Sunday School lesson this morning talking about turning sinners, sinners into discipleship, lexics, and text, Luke 5 and 27 through 39, uh, related scripture, Matthew 9, 9 through 17, Isaiah 58, 3 through 9, Ezekiel 36, uh, 25 to 28, uh, place in a city, in a city in Galilee. Golden text, Jesus answered and said unto them, They that are whole, not need a physician, but they that are sick, I cannot, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. In Luke 5, 31 and 32. Uh, the fact, facts to, facts to aim, to affirm that Jesus is calling disciples Today and offer new life to those who will follow him. And for all, for all that want to, to follow Jesus, he want to, he wants to offer you new life, a new beginning. And I think somewhere in all our lives that we look for a new beginning, but if you uh, feel like in life that you need a new beginning, you, you tired of the old way, amen. Jesus saying this, check one, Jesus saying that's what he come to do, to give you, give us, all of us, new life, a new beginning. And that's one thing, think about that, uh, 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 Dawkins, uh, uh, Evangelist Dawkins, our church, Holy Trinity, new beginnings, amen. <laughs> uh, and so, uh, Check one. Check one. So Jesus, yeah, he wants to give you a, uh, anybody that follow him, a new beginning. The principle to demonstrate that life is given a purpose when we, when we come to Jesus. And if you feel like you don't have a purpose in life, amen. If you start, if you start following Jesus, I guarantee you that he will uh, uh, give you a purpose in life, a meaningful purpose, uh, application to see, to see how a life of discipleship brings greater blessings and rewards, rewards them than anything the world can offer. Amen. And it says to see how a life of discipleship brings greater blessings and rewards than anything the world can offer. In other words, without kicking saying, a, a life following Jesus is better than win, winning the lottery. Because see, if you hit the lottery, I mean, they don't mean, it, it, it'll bring you temporary joy, temporary happiness, it'll buy you material things. But I, I, I come to find out that, that material things uh, don't last that that joy with temporary stuff don't last that, that long and you get a new car I guess a couple months later uh, once that car done got it, it, uh, the new the, the newness done wore off it's just like a regular old car to you and you know you, you move into your new house uh, uh, six months later it, it, you know you install that and dust accumulating when you first go in there you dust and everything that's a, you don't want no dust on it like when you get a new car you wash it every week because you don't want no dirt on it yeah, then months later ah okay it, it's not got old to me now it's new but one thing about Jesus when he when he bless you amen it, it's just something it, it, like it's renewed every day it, you know it, it's, it's that inner joy that the world didn't give and the world can't take it the world trying to take it away but it can't take it away amen 
And uh, it's an end thing the world can offer. See, the world can offer a lot of times people, you know, you ask them, why are you smoking weed? Or why, why, now some of them ain't doing, some of them ain't smoking weed for, for medical reasons. Some of them smoke. <laughs> <laughs> some of some of smoking weed for recreational reasons, or uh, oh, well, putting them in that, in that relaxed mode, or to take them uh, take them away from this world. Amen. But if I I want to recommend Jesus to you. He can take you to a place that you will feel so comfortable. Amen. That weed shooting up in your arm. All that stuff. I mean, Jesus Jesus got something better for you than that because once you. Start attacking the drugs and stuff. You get addicted. I want to tell you, get addicted to Jesus. Amen. If you want to get away from the pressure of this world, amen, get get with Jesus. And you see how he'll, he'll talk with you, walk with you, rock with his arms. I'll let you know that everything's going to be all right. Just lean and depend on me. Amen. So we better about leaning and depending on everything else. We like a woman had the issue of blood. They said she tried doctors after doctors, but when she tried Jesus, Amen. She got healed. And so, if you want healing, wherever you need healing, I ain't talking about actually physically. It, it could be finance healing, uh, relationship healing. Wherever you need healing that in your life, I guarantee you, try Jesus. And I guarantee you, whatever walk uh, life you need a healing that, God can do it. Okay, introducing the lesson. No matter. What you have done, Jesus still loves you and wants you to follow him. And so Paul, uh, when he used to be Saul, he said, I was the cheapest. I'm mean, at the cheapest of sinners. Amen. I don't care what you, you, you might, I don't think nobody done did that worse than Paul. I mean, uh, uh, Saul, Saul that turned into Paul and somebody might have, but he said, I was the chief of sinners. And so if God could change him and use him, God can use you too. Amen. You have did nothing so low that God won't pick, pick, pick you up, turn you around and use you for his glory. In this week's lesson, we will meet a man who was a wicked sinner, a cheater, <laughs> and a time and times a thief. And, and, I, and some of y'all that are watching this Sunday School lesson, Love drama. Love to be around drama. Uh, love to be around conflict. I know I said this early part. I mean, uh, sometime last year uh, when I was teaching that if you want, if you want drama, if you want conflict, and you want, if, if, if you love messy stuff, read the Bible because you will read how David had a woman's husband killed by putting him on the front line of war just to, just to, uh, just to have him. That's drama, and how. Um, um, how you just had different characters in the Bible, how you had uh, Joseph's brother kill him, all because they they, they didn't uh, appreciate what he was, uh, well, they didn't uh, like that he was saying that he was going to be over them, he was going to be kind of greater than them. So they had John, I mean, uh, Joseph, they uh, tried to kill him, huh? Yeah, kidnapped him. They uh, put a uh, try to put him in a ditch, and his big brother Reuben, when he was around, he tried to rescue him. But sometimes only God can rescue out of a situation. And, and but I said that to say that if you like drama, if you like conflict, read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And about conflict, if you want conflict when Herod, when Jesus was first born, uh, Herod was after the killing. I mean, if you want conflict, if you want drama, read the Bible. I guarantee you, and you will find every bit of drama and conflict that you want to find in there. Uh, and imagine you a newborn baby and somebody trying to kill you at birth. Isn't that something now? I couldn't imagine somebody trying to, um, my, my pastor Liz May Bridges over there, as soon as she was born, somebody was trying to kill her. <laughs> no, she's going to be pastor, you know, later on in life. Let's kill her before she start pastor. You know, it, it just, it, 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 it's drama. And, you know, and you got uh, people uh, in this day and time don't like you, don't even know you, don't, there's no love you, don't like, I don't like dogs. Why you don't like dogs? I just don't like it. I mean, you ain't, give me a reason. And they'll try to do something to you. Yeah. The Bible says, watch as well as pray. Yeah, that's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. And so, now, I ain't never understand people that don't like folks just because they don't like them. To me, they just got to be jealousy or, or something because you got to have a reason. You have a reason not to like something. 
right. dislike somebody. Not just because you don't like them, because you said the album is poetry and it's rocking chair. Well, get you a poetry and you're a rocking chair. Oh, boy. All right, developing the, um, developing the lesson. Well, let me finish reading that. He was a thief. He was even hated by his own people. Hey, you know, Jesus, this ain't nothing different. Uh, Jesus was hated by his own people. Mm -hmm. you, you know, so everybody in your family, everybody in your neighborhood, everybody on your, your, uh, on your job, everybody ain't going to like you. If you're walking around and think everybody like you, you mistakenly misguided and you are... Uh, you is in, uh, you're going to wake up to a root of awakening because everybody don't like you. If everybody in your circle patting you on the back, I guarantee you somebody got a dagger, a pitchfork, or a fork, or something in their hand stabbing you. And it might be the, be the one saying, I got your back. Yeah, they got your back all right. <laughs> like the pastor said, this ready? That's something she preached it? Yeah. Yeah. The weapon they'll use against you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure will. And so, uh, so what, you, you know, uh, it says, uh, the, uh, new life given, Luke 5, 27. And it starts, well, uh, I just don't want to eat, uh, eating with the sinners, uh, studying the text. Call, call and Levi, Luke 5 and, uh, 27, 28. It talks about in that paragraph how Luke, uh, Levi was a tax collector and made it a more than necessary. <laughs> That's all like they next year doing that good. In the day and time, I guess we all feel like they collect it more than they should. And uh, then they collect your uh, social security and tell you when you can get it. Then when you retire, they tell you you don't know, make so much if you still want to get your uh, you know social security. Isn't that something? It, 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 this is the world. Now, if you already put in social security mm -hmm. and you retire, and it's your money. And it's your money. You work why they don't money. tell you? I mean, how to get your money? Then tell you, well, you're. I think what eight seventy or seventy one or something. After something, you you retire, you can go back to work, and make as much as you want to that month. How are they going? That's text collected. I mean, it, it, when I, when I was reading that, I was thinking about the same thing. Like they they still mess it with, with, with the taxes. And it's saying, and it goes on and says, uh, making themselves wealthy at the expense of people. This is why John the Baptist once told them, except no man, except no more than that which is appointed you. 3, three and 13. Uh, I guess I'll leave us at that and read that part of uh, about what John the Baptist said. <laughs> Don't take no more than was appointed to you. Uh, and, and so uh, it goes on down in that, in that second paragraph, in that last, uh, it says, um, after Luke 19 and 2, it says, Though the Bible does not discuss his, his financial status, it seems safe to assume that he was driven to this position by greed. He was no doubt hated by the Jews. Uh, greed drives a lot of them to do stuff. I mean, a lot of a lot of people that's over, I guess, our taxes and money. Greed, 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 greed. Greed is, is a dangerous spot to be in. Uh, I'll go back, I, I just remember uh, back in Luke, in our scripture text, Luke 5 and 26, says, after these things, he went forth and saw a publican named Levi sitting at the receipt, receipt, yeah, receipt, uh, of custom. And he said unto him, follow me. And, and as you read the lesson, uh, the script, uh, as the Bible tells us, the Levi immediately stopped what he was doing and followed Jesus. Mm -hmm. There's something about when in the Bible days, uh, uh, he, uh, you know, uh, uh, Peter knew how that he told them to stop and come on and I'll make you fishermen. Mm -hmm. And how they, and when Jesus spoke back then, how people just stopped what they was doing and started following Jesus. I mean, they didn't procrastinate. They, they stopped what they was doing and went about to follow But Now Jesus called us today. We even a little stubborn or whatever. But, but back then, they, uh, they, they uh, uh, stopped as uh, what they're doing then and followed Jesus. Go ahead, Alfie. Uh, I was just looking at the, uh, at Luke 29. Yeah. Uh -huh. Anyway, uh, down in the second paragraph, I'll just read this portion of it. Then 
Levi Hayam uh, wanted his uh, uh, wanted his accusers to know immediately about the uh, change that had just happened in his life. And I was just thinking, you know, when the Lord touches you and there's a change in your life, you want everybody to know it. You just go uh, go telling everybody this this is uh, when Jesus had come to Levi's house, Matthew's house, and he had invited all of his friends and everything, and all, uh, all, I don't know, the wicked, not everybody, he wanted them to know, there's a change in my life. Mm -hmm. And we as people today, so of the time, we notice people, they want to kind of keep it to themselves. But I tell you, when the Lord touched you, I think about what the son said, I said I wasn't going to tell nobody. But I couldn't keep it to myself. <laughs> like, Amen. Amen. Yeah, so, because you know in the Bible, in, in, there's some uh, different places in the Bible when Jesus blessed folks, he said, don't say nothing about it. I but they couldn't keep it. Couldn't keep it. They couldn't keep it. And I, and I think Jesus knew they won't be able to keep it to themselves. And it's just something about the joy of the Lord. Amen. You just can't keep it to yourself. You got to tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. Amen. And, and, and you know, and you know too, even in the natural life, even in the natural life, when we get hold to something good, we go and tell our friends, you know, uh, you, you can go down there, sun is no fog, and oh, they got the best peaches down there. Or uh, you can sit and say, well, we go over there, that's uh, uh, James Rat up there, up in Corn Culture, and they got all the good water there. You are willing to share when you get it. Like the Lord, like the Bible say. Now, when you just get a halfway shim, you ain't gonna <laughs> say too much about it. But when you get it and you get it right, you'll be just like jump, jump. <laughs> Look out! <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Jesus commanded a sit, uh, go back. <clears throat> <clears throat> Last paragraph, man. Up on the call of Levi. Um, Jesus' command, command was simple and without explanation. Follow me. To anyone observing the moment, Levi would have seen a most unlikely choice for a disciple. And, and see, I, one thing I like about our Lord and Savior, he had no respect to the person. When other people say you're going to mount to nothing, you are no good, you are no count. Amen. God sees something great in you. God sees something good in you. God yes. sees that he can use you to get uh, to be glorified. And so, if you feel like you know, people don't push you down or you feel like uh, you ain't nothing in life, I guarantee you, if you get with Jesus, amen, he'll make you feel like somebody. He sure will. Amen. He, he'll, he, he, he'll talk with you or walk with you. Nobody else won't deal with you. Jesus will. That's why the, uh, the scribes and the Pharisees, amen, self-righteous folks, uh, don't wonder why. Jesus, why are you, why are you with them? Amen. Well, why are you with them? And I, like I often say, you're going to always have scribes and Pharisees meddling in your business. Amen. Always bang upon them. Amen. And if you, if you got some uh, scribes and Pharisees in your life, ask them what they do. Amen. That's right. You know, I just wanted to bring that song in. When everyone else seen the worst in me, he seen the best. The best. Right. Yes, sir. The best. Oh, yeah. Oh, people, you know, especially, you, you know, uh, self centered uh, uh, jealous folks, they don't see the worst in you. Uh -huh. um, people being a crap in the bucket, they see the worst in you. But Jesus always going to look in there and, and find that golden nugget. Why? Because he, he made you. He know all about you. Amen. And so Jesus knows he can use you. Uh, uh, like I said, if he saved Saul and changed his name into Paul, hey, he can use you too. Amen. If he saved an old wretched man like me, he can save you and use you too. Old wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from this body of death? Nobody but Jesus. Only Jesus can deliver. Amen. And it says, uh, that last uh, paragraph on it. It says, but Levi responded immediately to Jesus, just like the fishermen Jesus called earlier. Like I just said, Levi immediately left his occupation and lifestyle to follow Jesus, amen. 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 You, if Jesus calling you unto salvation to follow him, hey, you, hey, the best thing you can do is follow Jesus. Why? Because that's the best thing going. Amen. That's the best thing going. Jesus is the best thing going. If you don't know how your life's going to end up, 
Amen. I can tell you how your life will end up. If you don't follow Jesus, you'll end up in hell. Amen. And uh, if you follow Jesus, yes, we're going to have bumps and bruises. But guess what? Jesus is going to be there to, uh, to, to, to pamper us. Jesus is going to be there to mean our broken spirit, our broken heart. You know, back in the day, I don't know if they still have it now. There used to be some stuff called the cure coma. When you yeah, get a scratch yeah, and you um, yeah. dial in. You know, I don't know if y'all remember that out there. Yeah. 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 Jesus will be on the cure coma and the dial in. Amen. He'll fix you up. And I think now in modern time, they got a band aid that they say you put this band aid on you and it's uh, help you heal faster. Jesus will be that you know, band aid that help you heal faster. Mm -hmm. Amen. The only thing you got to do is try. And if you try him, I guarantee you, hey, you'll find out that he's all right. I guarantee you he will. Yes, now they got a thing, uh, I think, in the doctor's office, they don't use needle and thread no more to stitch a person up. They don't have to. They got some kind of, uh, 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 some kind of, band yeah, band-aid. It's liquid skin. Liquid skin. You know, uh, you got a little yeah. script of liquid yeah. skin here. Uh, I remember that liquid skin that did my chest like that when uh -huh. I have an open heart. And Jesus will be that liquid skin. He'll be that uh, band-aid script. Amen. He'll put you back together again. But the devil, only thing he's going to do is use you, beat you up, leave you out there, leave you Leave you in the desert, leave, leave you out there hungry, leave you out there homeless, leave you out there friendless. But Jesus is a friend all the way to the end. Amen. Oh, what a, uh, a fellowship with a joy of the vine. Leaning on the everlasting arm. Are you leaning on it the, today? I, I guarantee you, if you lean on Jesus, everything will be all right. Amen. We may endure for a night, but if you lean on Jesus, that joy will come real fast. I guarantee you, if you just try him, right. you find out that everything's going to be all right. Yeah, you might not have that much money in your pocket. Amen. Bills are due. Amen. Just be in the boat with everybody else. Amen. But we we know, some of us know that in the boat that, amen, that Jesus is going to supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. If we just stay faithful to him, amen. it's going to work out for the good of them that loves the Lord. Jesus got a bank in heaven, a blessing, money, whatever you need. All you got to do is just activate it. That's right. Your turn to get it out. I know that's right. Just make sure you hear what the sister Ross says. She said, Jesus got a heavenly bank. Whatever you need, just activate it. I like that. I'm going to steal that one. Amen. Just activate it. Amen. Put your four digit code in. Amen. And, and do a rich draw. What's your four digit code? Put them on scripture. Amen. So make sure you sow the seeds and give them to the house of God. You're doing your part, then when you go put your code in, it won't be denied. It just start shooting out blessings. Amen. 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 You, gotta, <laughs> you gotta make sure you're doing your part, though. Pastor Amen. tell us that. You know, Sunday night, no, Sunday, make sure you're doing your part, and God will do His part. Amen. And that's why I try to stretch the people, uh, Avengers Doctor, that if we're doing our part, Amen, Amen. and we just let patient. Have uh, after we do our part, we gotta make sure we got patience though. Amen. A lot of people don't want to deal with that word patience, mm -hmm. but to be in this uh, 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 dealing with salvation and, 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 and uh, this Christian journey, you got to have patience because He don't always come just like that. Amen. But when he comes, you're happy to see him. Amen. <laughs> you'd be so happy to see him. And so I'm just saying that have patience. Amen. A lot of times I done got into financial uh, difficult because uh, I didn't have patience. I didn't wait on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now I guarantee you, if all of us uh, lean out to all understanding and all our ways and not the Lord can direct our path, how often, you know, like when we go purchase a car or go purchase a house and uh, uh, make a big purchase or whatever, else, if we just wait on the voice of Jesus. Even though I know you, you know, like I said, your credits said, yeah, yeah, even your money said, yeah, you can do it. But imagine if we just not rely on that code. We get complacent. We, we rely on our, you know, credit. We rely on, on, on our money. But in the midst of that, and don't consult Jesus. And see that, and see sometimes we let our money and our credit replace Jesus. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, you know, acknowledge him. Imagine, you go in that car, and all because we didn't wait on Jesus, we paying on the car, but maybe we could got halfway free, mm -hmm. halfway paid off, mm -hmm. uh, uh, or whatever. But by we didn't wait on Jesus, we get to something finance for five or six years. But if we might have waited on him, maybe he somebody bless us with, you know, something. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I was just thinking, when you 
say that I thought about what my daddy used to say. Don't count on nothing you don't have in your hand. <laughs> a lot of times I used to go to him, I said, well, but dad, I need uh, this here and all, and I'm going to get this here and I'm going to do this there. And when the time come up, it didn't work out like I thought it would. Yeah. But when you put your faith in the Lord mm -hmm. and not trying to uh, do your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, he will direct your path. Yeah. Yeah. And I, now, I got those pops in this on that. I just imagine if she just leaned to the Lord and let him let him direct her as we, as she, on this new adventure, uh, new church, new church. I just imagine what things would be free. I mean, donated tax right off and all that stuff. Yeah, they're free. Yeah, they're free. <laughs> if we just wait and lean on the Lord and not be in too big of a hurry and leave the Lord out of it. Like, Lord, so well, you so big of a hurry, I had $10,000 worth of loan free for you. But you so big, and cause somebody offered this in the head. It, you know, just never know. You, you know? Right. Amen. 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 So, Amen. So, Amen. It can turn people off. Oh, yeah. It can, oh, it can make them turn that part. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. But it turn them loose. Right. <laughs> <laughs> turn them loose. I'm experiencing that. <laughs> yeah. I know that's right. Turn it loose. We got to trust it now. Yeah, we got, got to. We got to Yeah, yeah, yeah. Knowledge is empty. Yeah, that's right. Because see, the thing about it, y'all, whoever watching around the world, God wants the glory. So it's going to turn out uh, uh, good because he wants the glory. And the scripture said that I'll be lifted up. I'll draw him. All things. Amen. Amen. So that, that's the thing. He just downloaded my spirit that it's going to work out because he's going to want the glory out of it. And so if we wait, so that new car, that new house, that new church, whatever new, amen. We just be patient. Boys, I guarantee you it, it, it's going to work out because God's going to want the glory out of it. All right. Uh, you know, the credit thing is points by man. That's man's way of saying he can give you this and give you that. Yeah. I had an experience. I've had so many doctor bills and hospital bills. I don't know about them doctor bills now. <laughs> and my credit was way down, down, down. Yeah. But like I told my husband, you can ask God for anything. If you live right, he'll grant it to you. Oh, I asked yeah. him for something, he gave it to me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but you said the key thing is that live right. Yes, exactly. And a lot of people want to straddle the fence and get cut and wonder why God, why God ain't getting cut. Because you're getting cut because you're straddling the fence. You can't share. Okay, back that up, preacher. All right, thank you for asking. He said you he, about being lukewarm, he'll steal you out. Yeah. Hey, Amen. You, you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you can't you can't be lukewarm. He's going to steal you out. Gas and oil don't mix. I mean, oil and water don't mix. Yes, Amen. And so, okay, uh, but okay, a uh, question about G questioning Jesus, Luke five and twenty nine. Jesus repeatedly teach, I mean, reach out to those normally considered social outcasts by uh, society. Amen. Like I said, society don't push you into a corner. Say you are nothing, you are nobody because your lifestyle or what you used to do. Amen. We serve a God that look beyond all your faults and see your needs. That's one thing about God. He'll look beyond your faults and see your needs. Man, they keep looking at your faults. Amen. They know your needs. They about your needs. They ain't talking about your faults. They help you with your needs. Amen. But Jesus will look beyond your faults and bless you with your needs. Especially if you got a repentant heart. Amen. You got to have a repentant heart. It goes on his action quickly brought a negative response from the religious leader. And see, Jesus' actions should, the religious leaders should have been rejoicing with Jesus. But now, they done got so too big for their preachers, they think they could hang out or minister to the sinner. Jesus was telling them, I might be getting ahead of myself, Jesus told them, I ain't come here for you. I came here for the sinner, man. I come, I, I, I come for the people that nobody don't want, the people that I'm talking about. Okay, Jesus said, I come for... I come to I come for people like the woman at the well. The woman had the issue of blood. I come for the, uh, the man at the uh, at the gate called Beautiful. The man that uh, laid at the pool. Jesus came for people like that. People that oh that folks old step overlooked and all that stuff and and and, uh, and, and cast out and didn't want to be bothered with. 
Jesus come to minister to folks like that. And when you got self-righteous people, amen, think they're better than everybody else. When you think you're better than everybody else, you have the attitude as a righteous leader. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can't make you better than nobody else. Cause last time I checked, we all go, well, some people put, they put pain that, but most of them. <laughs> the reason I said that, I was thinking, well, my children do it, so on the bed, put both legs in at a time. <laughs> but most people put their pants on one leg at a time. Amen, <laughs> most people. But, uh, yeah. Uh, in that last paragraph, I said, down there says, so, so he organized a great feast in his own home and invited a large group of people to participate. Levi was filled with joy and over the new turn in his, in his life and was taken, next page, and wanted, wanted to share it with others. Amen. Everybody ain't going to uh, rejoice in your salvation. Everybody ain't going to rejoice when you got a new truck, doctors. Everybody ain't going to rejoice when we put like when pastor got that nice SUV out there. Everybody ain't going to rejoice with you. Amen. But they don't know. They cut their blessings off when they don't rejoice with you. When God done bless you. Amen. Everybody not going to uh, rejoice with pastor when that new church sitting up down here. Well, how can she do that with 30 members? Amen. When you put God first, anything, just, anything can happen. Amen. Amen. Anything can happen. Amen. 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 When God is in the equation and, and your people been taught right and how to give and they know there's more blessing to give than receive. Amen. God's going to open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessing. My, 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 my. And, but, but God, uh, but uh, so as people rejoicing, you're going to have some jealous folks. You're going to have people in it. But all we got to do is keep on rejoicing, holding up the blood stain banner, holding up the light, amen, which is Jesus Christ. And you know, for, for God I live, Miss Pat, and for God I die. Amen. amen. Say what you want to say. Do what you want to do. But for God I live. For God I die. Amen. I'm going to testify by his goodness. I'm going to get happy by his goodness. Amen. Because if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? He kept all my enemies away. He let the sun shine through a cloudy day. He rocked me in the crate of his arms. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Amen. Oh, I want to see him one day. Look upon his face. Amen. See Yes, sir. All right, yes, sir. Sing by his glory. Amen. Amen. They sing it on him at Concord. Amen. Oh, yes, sir. And it goes on and says, uh, uh, it was the scribes and the Pharisees who grumbled, there we go, about the situation. And uh, asking, why Jesus was eating with the tax collector and the sinners? Amen. That's when Jesus told them, I didn't come for you, I come for them. Amen. So if you feel like you, you, you didn't hit rock bottom, Jesus come for you. If you feel like, I mean, uh, uh, ain't no way up in life, but the, the, you so far down, and the only way in life now is, is for you to come up, Jesus died just for you. Amen. Amen. It goes on, this implicates that in their objection was that if he were a uh, genuinely righteous teacher, like them, uh, yeah, everybody wants, uh, now the Pharisees and the, and, 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 uh, and the scribes trying to put Jesus in the box with them. You know, a lot of times people try to put you in the same box with you. Amen. But hey, as long as you know you're doing right, you don't have to get in that box with them. Like, hey, you, you stay over there being in your box. I don't like to be in your box. So the Pharisees, they're trying to put Jesus in the same boat with them. And he will prefer their company over and so he will prefer their company over the company of sinners. Uh, uh, oh. And uh, and see, and that, that's one that, that that's one thing that the church got to be careful of about when uh, uh, you know uh, if you had a discussion about a year ago about what was seen on YouTube or when that pastor told that guy that came in, I guess dressed like a woman, to go back and, and dress right and come back to the church. And I didn't make a comment on that at that time because I told them I didn't know. But they said, that's why sometimes don't be so quick to speak but to pray. When I, I came back and I told God, I prayed about it. And Jesus said, well, if, if people like that can't come to church and get healed and delivered, how are they going to get healed and delivered? Amen. 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 If, if you amen. cast them out, right. amen. Well, how they, the streets ain't going to do it. Come amen. On. The 
sweet saying on a uh, sweet life into them, let them know, hey, amen, you can change it and do better. Amen. So yeah, that if that anybody seen that video, yes, yeah, that pastor was wrong. Amen. And when any time the Bible said, come as you are, amen. We were going in the sack. Come as you are, amen. amen. He'll clean you up. Amen. That's why the scripture say, let Jesus separate the wheat from the tail. We can't do it. Amen. Well, every time we try to separate from the wheat from the tail, we're gonna we're gonna lose some wheat. Amen. Amen. But if Jesus separate the wheat from the tail, it'll be done and in order. Amen. So we got to be careful. And we so quick to judge people. Yeah. And God is thinking to judge. Yeah. But the thing about it is yeah, right. we punching people and saying soon as they walk through the door. Oh, mm hmm yeah. Yeah, it's got crumbling in it. Soon as we are. Uh, that's all. That's all. That's all. Soon as we uh, see them coming to the door, we got comments to say about. Yeah. Uh, when we see them out walking the street, we got comments to tell mm -hmm. Instead of praying. Yeah. That's where our job is, is to pray and to how to help yeah. somebody. Mm -hmm. We can't help somebody gossiping about. Yeah. We can't help somebody put them down. Yeah, that's right. We can't help somebody throw them under the bus. My uh, grandmother said, throw them under the bus. That's right. But we got to help the yeah, people so. as they go, as we see them in the situation. Mm -hmm. The sooner we start praying yeah. for people, yeah. the sooner we start looking at Amen. the situation. We don't know what that situation is. Amen. We right. don't know what caused that. Yeah. We don't know how they happen to be like that. It might have been born so. like that, but God can change that. Amen. Come on now. But it might also have been. Yes, and they came that way. Come on now. But we got to come out from under there. Yes, sir. Jesus. Talk about it, preacher. Yes, sir. That's my pastor. Go ahead. Talk about it. Amen. Don't know the reason why, but we are who they are, all that. No, we can't have that kind of attitude. Amen. And, and say so we're trying to reach people for Christ. Jesus, uh, uh Answering the critics, Jesus responded carrying a strong implication of his own that they uh, that they are whole need not not a physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Amen. All that you got to do uh, is repent. In Matthew. Uh, three and two says, "Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand." Amen. So, only thing you got to repent. What, whatever you done did in life, I, Amen. If you, uh, I don't know if anybody behind bars could see this, but if, if somebody behind bars or somebody had too long got released from jail or whatever, all oh, just saying, repent. Amen. He accept you. Amen. He he loved people like that. He he loved sinner man. He loved to say the old ratchet person. Amen. So I'm thinking you got to repent and yield to him. I guarantee you he'll come and suck with you. Amen. We know that what we know that what drives us to a doctor is sickness rather really than good health. We also know that spiritual sickness drive people to Jesus. Amen. Spiritual sickness, I mean, sickness drive people to Jesus. So if you spiritual sick, if you spiritual tired, Jesus said, "Come unto me, all you labor and heavy laden. I will give you rest." Amen. Uh, down in that next uh, uh, paragraph, in their minds, they themselves were the righteous ones. <laughs> Amen. That's what, see, they get too big for the bush to think they know everything. And while tax collectors and those associated with them were worthless, uh, low life. Amen. Uh, overturned this expectation of his critics by saying that those who considered themselves righteous were not the ones he came to call. Why not? Because they had no realization of their spiritual need and were not open to his teaching. Amen. So if you open up to his teaching, amen. He, I tell you, he'll feed you. Amen. And the old song we used to sing, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I won't no more. Bread of heaven, feed me till I won't no more. Amen. And so he'll do, he'll feed you until you want no more. And David said, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I guarantee you, once you taste it, he's good. And then, you know, every time I go to Walmart, Pastor Bridges, I got to get me a Reese Cup because I love some Reese Cups. But Jesus is better than a Reese Cup. Amen. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. I love it. Oh, yeah, I love some Reese Cups. Did you get one Friday? <laughs> <laughs> so 
So I get one fire. I probably did. I got one with them, but I probably did. I get so many in there. <laughs> oh, one, one of the doorkeepers at Walmart, like, you can just come get a Reese's cup, didn't you? I'm like, yeah. Especially when I was working at the cookout, I leave on my break and go and get a Reese's cup. And, uh, but Jesus, oh yeah, he been in the Reese's cup. And then, no, the other Sunday, I think, uh, other day, last time I was at church, I was talking about, uh, molasses and bread. He been in molasses and bread, dog. Because if he know about molasses and bread, and that milk and butter in there, Jesus been in there. Jesus, over the, okay, read that. Uh, then the next, oh man, okay. Uh, the next the teaching about fasting. I know Pastor wanted to hit on that. <laughs> uh, Father the Lord, the scribes and the Pharisees were not only upset at the disciples' friends, but also at their uh, obvious. obvious joy as they fought fellowship with Jesus and the guests. And, uh, and it says, we get the impression that the Pharisees experienced little, if any, joy in their practice of their religion. Uh, they, they used two examples of others who were acting the way they thought they should. The disciples of John and their own disciples. Amen. But they, uh, the Pharisees uh, and, and the scribes were getting on uh, them by, cause of, uh, yeah, about fasting. Amen. And we in fasting here at Holy Trinity. Amen. It's something about fasting. And the Bible tells you, you know, some things you can't get unless you fast and pray. Amen. Amen. And so some sickness, <laughs> maybe some uh, financial breakthrough or some things that you're looking for in life might not come unless you fast and pray. And that's scripture. That ain't what Vance said. That's the word of God. What it's standing on the word, but it says seek ye first. Mm -hmm. the king, uh -huh. the king of God. Mm -hmm. See, he wants you to fast with him. He wants you to get involved with him. Amen. Then he'll get you. He said, I supply all your needs mm -hmm. yep. according to his riches. Yeah. It's nothing that we did, nothing mm -hmm. we have, mm -hmm. but he wants you to, to come to him. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Surrender to him. Surrender. Uh -huh. Give him your all. Amen. If you give him your best, your best is nothing compared to what he has. All right, now, preacher. Have nothing to compare him. All right. Mm -hmm. Doctors want to say something. Uh, the purpose of fast was to uh, dedicate oneself to play and and an uninterrupted interrupted time of uh, focusing on God. So we see what that is. You got to uh, get everything else out of your mind. Come on, sir. And a lot of times when a person is fasting. Uh, sometimes it's going and shut up itself. Mm -hmm. They don't want no thing with the world or what have But I want to get in contact with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And what this is also saying is bringing your body under subjection. Ooh. How to do it. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anyway, <laughs> Amen. Whatever it takes. 
Whatever it takes. Anyway. <laughs> Amen. Particular points. Every sinner is a soul. The dog done got the fire burning now. We're just on wood on it. <laughs> Every sinner is a soul worth saving. Amen. Remember that, uh, Pharisees. Luke 5, 27, 28. Number two. <coughs> we know Jesus uh, went. I mean, when we know Jesus, we want to share the joy of knowing him with those who do not yet know him. Amen. Verse 29. Amen. Amen. Number Amen. three. God deeds and good appearances. Good deeds. Good, uh, yeah, good deeds and good appearances can never uh, uh, exempt. exempt a sinner from the call to repent. Repent. 30, 30 to 32. We should... Joyfully await the return of Jesus. I, I, I am. Amen. 33 to 35. The call to discipleship is more than a challenge or habit. It is an uh, invitation to a new life in Christ. Amen. 36. The last one. We do not need to accept Jesus' sacrifice as, I mean, and also keep the law to be saved. We need to accept his gracious. Salvation by faith. Amen. 37 through 39. Thank you for joining us on school. Let's be here on the train while we're by Pastor Pastor Lumen Ray Bridge with uh, uh Vangis Dawkins. Thank you for tuning in on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and Periscope. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Until we meet again, amen. Uh be to God blessings.